have to, if you have your Bible, turn to Hebrews chapter 5. Thank you, Lord. The Holy Spirit hit some of it about where we are, the season that we are in. You know, I told you before, those us of who are over 45 and 50, heaven has already made its choice. There are many millennials who have yet to be chosen. Many of them will be chosen in the last hour. But those, us, who are over 45 and 50, unfortunately, heaven has already made its choice. What do you mean? What do I mean? For the church to advance farther, and I'm talking about the body of Christ as a whole, one simple thing that we have not understood as church people and that is that we are all connected even the Christians believe that you have never met and have never seen you are connected to them the only the thing is is because you don't know that they exist you don't know who they are and you maybe live seas apart then the ripple of what impacts them maybe be ver maybe barely felt by you but even that's not the plan of god as holy spirit spoke tonight from the lord jesus heart he seeks for those who will take his burden why his burden? Because when you take his burden, you would feel the ripple of all of those who are impacted by darkness. You will feel it. He will enable you to feel it. But just like anything, the Lord doesn't dump the full impact upon us. Just like, just like what the Lord felt on the cross, the Bible says in Psalm, the bulls of Bashan, they into him and you can see the 20th the second psalm amen that the Lord quoted the entire psalms you know when he they cried out that it is finished but, but the Bible said they came and they pounced upon him after after he gave up himself after he with the what the Bible said he that knew no sin was made to be sin okay, can you wrap your mind around was made to be sin he became sin no he was not a sinner that's why sin could not hold him in the grave he was made sin for us he was the bait that God used to crush Satan's entire kingdom. He could not use you and I. He could not use in, in, any angelic being. They had to be both human and divine like you are. Amen. The Bible says that man was in God's image and likeness. He wasn't talking about human. God don't have a human body. So that's not what he was talking about. Amen. The holiness that man was clothed with. And you heard me say this. It's better repeating though. Man, he had a life that he got from God. It was his own life. His life was not sustained by the life of God. Now, understand what I'm saying? Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me break that down for you for let your mind go all over the place. It's like if I can break a piece of myself off, 
Now it is separate from me. But it is still my life because it came from me. But that life now is self-existent. Its sustainedness now is within itself. And so he gave that to Adam. Now then he turned to Adam and said, now if you want to keep that life sustained, you go where? To the tree. Where I put more of that life and you eat of it. And this is what Adam was doing. What was all of this for? It was a test for his life. To be sustained by him perpetually. Have God's life is not to lose your character or who you are. It is your very existence is because of him. Okay? Big difference. So God comes down the cool of the day and walk and talk to this life that he gave birth to. God don't even live inside of it. He's not inside of it. He's teaching this life how to use that life that he gave it. And hence, the lessons every day in the walk. And I believe that it was at least a thousand years God walked with this man before the woman came along. His God took a piece of himself and created Adam's life. Then he took a piece of Adam and created the woman's life. He clothed them both in a body. Put within each one of them purpose. And put them both on a journey for what? His life. his life to be a container of his life now prior to that time everything else that God had made and created had already been made already been made all of the angelic kingdoms all of the the, the, the elder kingdoms there are 24 elders and each one of those elders has elders up under them. There are cherubims and each one of them have cherubims up under them. And there are seven angelic rates and each one of them has angels up under them. But none of them has God's life in them. Now, even man doesn't yet. But he was created for a different, higher purpose. Much higher. And the angels wondered about it. What's going on? One of them said it and Paul picked it up. What is man that thou art so mindful of him? What is so special about the son of man that you visit him? What is it? they didn't know and they surely thought that God would be done with this man when this man committed treason and walked away from this God they surely knew Whoa, surely God would be done with but God didn't God became a man and died for him they couldn't grasp this why? Why you want to hang around with this being? Who walked away from you. And then you died for him. And then this being still don't appreciate you. Why do you waste time with this being? That's what the angels can't grasp. 
They don't understand why you walk away from truth. They don't understand why you trample the blood underfoot. They don't understand any of that. Because their face ever beholds the Father. There is no time or distance in the realm of the Spirit. They can stand in the realm of the Spirit and be right in the presence of the Father. Right in His presence. They don't understand you humans. How unappreciative you can be. They don't understand that. But your King does. Amen. He took on the likeness of sinful flesh. And when you are lonely, he understands it, but the angels don't. And when you hurt because you lose someone close to you, he understands it, but the angels don't. And when you are betrayed and stabbed in the back, he understands it, but the angels don't. He is touched with the feelings of your weaknesses. And they are learning about you by watching him, by what he did. They came to understand you by watching him live in the flesh. And when the enemy stood toe to toe with him, in that 40 day temptation you ought to read Rick Jonah's book that he wrote about it's strictly from the angel's perspective during that period of time and Jesus walking on the earth and the whole conversation was the angels with one another in Jesus very powerful book when God walked the earth and the angels sit back in Micah the prince over Israel the archangel, 65 feet tall, he is. And he's walking beside the Lord. And the Lord telling them, a time will come that you will not be able to fight for me. I have to do this myself. And Michael had to tell the angels to sheathe their sword. Don't take your sword out when he is tempted when he is spit upon when he is slapped and cursed do not take your sword out you can't help it they didn't understand this they certainly didn't understand why you were worth it they didn't but all this was hidden in the heart of the Father. Lucifer, who walked in the midst of the stones of fire, that's inside of God. He had a privilege of stepping inside of God. Lucifer did. He thought he knew all there was to know about God. How foolish he was. Romans 5 says, if he had a known that Jesus was the babe, he would have not crucified him. He didn't know. He didn't know the plan of God was to make some like unto the first one. Or in this case, the second one. The second Adam. When Adam failed the test, when Adam failed the test, when he failed the test, and this is what's, what's so scary about it. Brother, sister, this is what's so scary about it. Here is a man created with no sin, you know, and with not a whole lot of ignorance. He understood perfectly what was going on. He understood it all. And he chose. He chose, just like Lucifer did. He chose to walk away. Lucifer chose to walk away from his purpose. He had a choice, but he had no right. Because everything the Father love makes, you know this, must be tested. Everything must be tested. 
we talking millions and millions of earth years here. We don't know how long it was in the expanse of time when these beings were being tested by God. But everything he made was tested. And all of the different classes, Lucifer convinced to walk away. See, with each test, there come the promotion. The angels are looking forward to a promotion too. I don't know to what degree they will be promoted, but they will. Just as they learned about God, the love of God, about the Father, by watching how God dealt with man through Jesus. That's how they learn. They learn that. And they, they learn how to work with you, how to deal with you as a human. That's how they've learned that. Well, one day when you take your place in his throne. But so have you ever thought about that? You have been given the opportunity to sit on thrones with him. The creator of the universe. The creator lifted you up, the created, to his level. Incomprehensible. This is what the angels are still scratching their head about. Incomprehensible. For you to be extended such a privilege. Now they fully understand a lot. Why? Because they have listened to the gospel. They have listened to men and women in order of God preach. And it comes out of their mouth and they sit and they listen. And they read this Bible just like you read it. The angels do. Trying to unfold the mysteries. But it was given for you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. And the only way then they come to know it, now listen to me, the angels that walk with you, that follows you, the only reason that they come to know it is when you come to know it. When you comprehend it and walk it out, they comprehend it and walk it out. That's why a lot of angels are always looking to be assigned to someone else who's progressing away from those that are not. That is the truth. We all started with four, six actually. Four in heaven and two stands around the throne, around the altar of God. They handle your sacrifice, thanksgiving that you offer to God. They handle it. When you, what you offer reaches heaven. Your two angels up there, they handle it and they take it to the altar of fire the altar of fire to the left side of the throne room. And they take what you offer, and because you are not pure, they take what you offer, and it goes to the altar, the fiery altar, the golden altar, and it is purified. Purified to the level and degree, well, what? God can breathe it in. <laughs> and that smoke, that incense, circles the father's head continuously and he hearing you he are hearing you 24 7 he hears you 24 7 he hears you he hears your cries and your tears he hears you your pain and your hurting it is never never out of his face and out of his sight but he has to allow you to feel the same hurt his son feels. He has to allow you to drink of the same cup his son drank of. You have to walk the same path that he walked to step into the same glory that he stepped in. Brother, sister, it is about whether you have been found worthy. This is what this is about. 
This is not about going to church. This is not about joining a church. This is not about singing songs or giving money. This is about becoming like him. That's what this is about. Becoming like him. That's growing up spiritually. So each one of you has mountains to go over. Each one of you has valleys to cross. Each one of you has things that will be put before you that you have to overcome. And every time you overcome it, you're saying that which is in me that is fighting me not to overcome. When you lay it down, you are saying, I love him more than it. That's what you're saying. Every time you overcome, that which is of his life goes inside of you. You take on more of his life. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? You take on more of his life. Paul said you can divide that life in three levels. Baby, children, and sons. There are so many that leave this life as babies because they don't grow up. What it really comes down to, most do not lay down their life what it really comes down to and it may sound pretty harsh but it is the truth what it comes down to is you did not love him enough to die that's what it comes down to you loved your life more see the test is still being tested try it is the same test that Adam failed the same test Adam loved his life with that wife he gave him more than he loved the life of God. Because the Bible tells you in Romans 5, the woman was deceived, the man wasn't. The man was not deceived, but he loved his life more with his wife than he loved the life of God. I do not know what would have happened to the woman if the, if the man had a stepped away and walked toward the tree of life and left her alone. I don't know what would have happened. Maybe God would have made another one and started all over again with him. I don't know. But he traded God's life for his own. And that life was a life of death. And that life sent all of us into death because the mold that was created that would bring more lives into the planet was tainted the woman's wound was now filled with sin and everyone that would come into the world from now on would be shaped in sin and iniquity But it appeared like God had lost. And Satan and Lucifer, they were all dancing. But God had a plan. Hallelujah. God had a plan. Amen. It didn't take him by surprise. Huh? Plan B. It simply would cost us much more. Amen. And so what did God do? What did God do? God had to get into the earth his plan. So he called for prophets with his voice. And they began to prophesy pieces of God's plan. The enemy is sitting back and he's listening Okay, somebody's coming. Somebody's coming. Well, matter of fact, God himself, first of all, started the prophecy off. Someone is coming that will put their feet on your neck. And you will bruise his heel. (laughs) Brother, sister, 
do not despise the things that were intended to come into your life to make you. You cannot be made without drinking the cup of suffering. You cannot. You can go to heaven and not drink the cup of suffering, but you cannot be made like him without drinking the cup of suffering. You cannot. The disciples yelled out and, 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 and the two mama's boys went up to Jesus and said, let my boy sit on your right and on your left, would you? Because <laughs> I see you going to be something, Jesus. <laughs> Sounded like a mama, don't it? <laughs> Jesus looked at him and said, woman, you don't know what you're asking me. For them to say, because they were right there, because Jesus turned to them and said, are you worthy? Can you drink of the cup? See, brother, sister, it's about being worthy. It's about promotion. It's about going through. Are you worthy to drink of the cup that I would drink of? They didn't even know what that cup was. But they spoke, why? Because they wanted the outcome <laughs> to sit on the throne. They said, yeah, Lord, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, Lord, yeah, we can. Huh? Jesus says, yeah, you'll drink. You most certainly will drink. <laughs> if you want what I have, you will drink. But to sit there is not mine to give. Get the lesson. Listen to what he's saying to him. It is not mine to give. That was given before the foundation of the world. Before you were ever created. That was given. Understand, brother and sister. In this thing called growing up spiritually. Before you came, why is this so important now? Because, sisters, brothers, sisters, this is what is at stake right now. And we don't have many more years on this planet. And this is what you are forfeiting, and or this is what you are fighting for, one or the other. See? The Bible said in, 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 in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, that the God of this world has blinded the eyes of them that believe not. Now, that scripture means many different things. It not only means that those who are not saved they're blinded but it also means those who are saved who are also blinded because they don't believe you got a lot of people in the body that don't believe in tongues you got a lot of people in the body that don't believe God heals you got a lot of people in the body that you can't live right you always have to sin a little bit every day that's all a lie but you got a lot of people in the body that believes that the eyes of them that believe not lest the light of this glorious gospel shine under them. The gospel is the power of God. The gospel has been given to us, will make you everything He intended you to be. It's in the gospel. You don't have to look in any other book, it's in the gospel. The gospel has the use. This unique and uncanny ability, when you read it, it will speak to you as an individual, and it will speak to you as an individual, and it will speak to you as an individual. This is what you have to understand. God is after the you he created you to be. That's what he's after. And he will not stop till the you he created you to be come forth. That's what he's after. And the enemy is after the you that he created you to be. That's why there are two types of love. That's how there are two types of wisdom. That's why there are two paths. And you can walk on the one that Lucifer has designed for you, or you can walk on the one that heaven has purpose for you. Brother, sister, the one that heaven has purpose for you, it will not be a lovely path. And as I told you on the sun, as, a, as that path intertwines around different things and around different circumstances and around different people, 
you got to stay on the path and you got to keep your eyes on him just because your circumstances change just because your reasoning change just because people come in your li- in and out of your life change your path does not change your destiny does not change who God intended for you to be does not change But it's the enemy's purpose to impact your life in a negative way, to push you far off the path that God purposed for you. And see, and if you don't love his life more, you will not fall on your knees to try to get back on the path in which you were created to walk. So what it comes down to you, you love your life more. Christian, yes. Save, yes. Talking in tongues, yes, but you love your life more. One of the things that God will do this year in a powerful way is to bring awakened people to their destiny, why he made them. Listen, as the fire of Pentecost is kindled right now, and as the fire of Pentecost, amen, draws near. Amen. I'm talking about the day of Pentecost. I think the feast of Pentecost is somewhere around June. I think that's what I told baby. I knew in this coming year that there is a fire that's coming from heaven. This Pentecost would be different than any other. That's why I said, remember I started the conversation. I said those of us who are over 45 and over 50, we have already been chosen. Why? Because there is no time to prepare, to prepare you for Pentecost that is right around the corner. And God has predetermined a certain level of fire to come from heaven. Just like it came from heaven in Acts 4, 2, Acts 2, 4. This is what Christians have failed to understood, understand. They have those who have the spirit of Ithaca. I thank the Lord he has blessed me to know the times and seasons. And I preach them. Hoping that people will hear and begin to walk in them. There was a tribe, you know, of, of, the, of Israel called Ithaca. They had the anointing to know what Israel needed to do. And this is what we have been endeavoring to endeavor in our preaching to, to get you to do. Because this is what you need to do to ready yourself. Now here's the fallacy among church people. Many know that change is coming. Many know that something is about to happen. Many know that, both bad and good. Many are just only on the bad side. And then you got some that's only looking at the good side. But both good and evil are both ripening y'all and they both will be harvested but you got those who think well if I go to church if I pray if I hang around you know keep hanging around Christian brothers and sisters when the fire comes it will hit me no it won't the knowledge of something is not enough what have you done with the knowledge? Have you prepared yourself? Here's the key, brother and sister. When Jesus got ready to step on the cloud of heaven and go back, he turned and looked at the 500 that had followed him out to that field. And he turned and looked at the 500 and said, Go all of you to Jerusalem and wait till the promise comes. 500 they heard it they knew it was coming the 10 day period from the resurrection to Pentecost represented preparation and you cannot even give a formula to each one and say this is what you got to do to prepare because all of us are differently you have to do something differently you have to do something differently there's something in your life in the way that's not in mine You need to go before the Lord and find out what you need to do to prepare. And it's not going to fall on you simply because you got the knowledge of it. Because if that's the case, it would have fell on the 320 that was nowhere around. 
but it only failed, the 380 rather, it only failed on the 120 that were there in the room. It did not fall on the other 300. They knew something was coming. They didn't know what or how. But what it came down to, brother, sister, they wanted their life more than his. That's what it comes down to. It always comes down to that. And the enemy is to see to it that you choose your life and not his. The enemy is the seat to it that he dangled things before you that are more important to you, that are more glorious to you than his life. It's the enemy's job. That is his objective. And he's good at it. He is good at it. And when the wind came and like a train going through a tunnel the sound came and they all were there even Mary the mother of Jesus she was there getting hers and the fire came and lit on each one of them now watch this here is old backslidden Peter just a few days before Peter in his heart really wanted to stand and fight with the Lord. He had the, he had the desire. He had the will. But it wasn't in him. There was no foundation there. It was nothing, had nothing to do with guts. It had to do with his life. And Peter stood there and cried and cursed and turned away from him. And when he wept, cried his eyes out. Why Peter? Why did the enemy talk to Peter? Why did he, Jesus turn and say, Peter, get behind me, Satan? Why did he call him Satan? Why is that? It was just like all of us. We have many members of one body. All of them have the, all have the same office. All of them have different giftings and callings and purposes. And with more and more, uh, 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 the, the more, the more from, a, from a human perspective, it's not from a heaven perspective. The more your anointing and your calling seem important and than others from a human, not heaven. The greater power and anointing you need, then the greater hell you're going to go through. The more you will be buffeted by the enemy. He has a right. Because he wants that life that comes with that gifting and calling. He wants that life taken from you because he can steal those giftings and mantles. He can steal them because you choose his life more. But Peter had a, something enough within him when he turned and repented and went back to the Lord. He had to have something in it, right, that was different than the 72. Jesus preached a message about resurrection. And 72 said, no. We raised the dead. That was fun. We healed the sick. That was fun. But we ain't cannibals. We can't eat your body and drink your blood. We, we out of here. And Jesus didn't try to explain it to them. And they left. 72. Can you see this, brother and sister? This is, the, this is the living son of God. They handled him. They touched him. He was with them. And he still had those who walked away from him. He still had those who were close to him and left him. It is no different today, brother and sister. And look at the numbers. It is always the majority that leaves, not the minority. The 500, 380. Of the 84, 72. It's always the majority. That's why the Lord weeps. That's why he needs you to share his burden of weeping. Because those are dear to him. Those are close to him. They hurt his heart. But there's nothing they can do, he can do about it. Because they chose their life.
There is a fire that is coming from on Pentecost. There is a fire. The feast is somewhere around June. And I need a, I, it would be somewhere around in May. The Lord told me to call a solemn assembly. And so it would be somewhere in May where we will go in a prayer revival. We've done them before. But we will fast and pray. Come here every day, fast and praying, leading up to Pentecost. There is a fire coming, brother and sister. There is a fire that is coming. Pentecost is much more than tongues. It is the resurrection life of the Lord. Now watch what Pentecost did to Peter. A few days before he was cussing, wanted to kill a guy, chopped his ear off, and ran away. Ten days later, he got up. And everything Jesus taught, he connected all the dots at one time. And he preached and got 3,000 saved. Peter did. He kept walking in that life that he got at Pentecost. And that life, that fire enables the light and the glory of God to escape. Peter walking one day and his shadow it wasn't the sun shadow from a sun it was the glory radiating from him he walked through someone that was laying down and it jumped up healed see Pentecost is resurrection power that's the promotion God is bringing to the church in this hour that's the transition that we are in it is not about the power of resurrection. It is not about the healing. It's about his life. That's why you must love his life more than yours. Because if he drops that power on you, brother, so that he would have to kill you later. Because the enemy will use you to start exalting yourself. See, it is his life. And as you pass these tests, as you walk through these things, he is dispensing you more and more of his life. More and more of his life. More and more of his life. You pass each test, more and more of his life. Until at the catching away, all of his life will overtake you and slap all of the blood right out of your system. And you will become immortal. Your body never to die, never to know pain ever again, never to know sorrow ever again. Sister, that's not very far away. We don't have years to go. We are entering in the last phase of God's plan. It will, be, it will not be a majority. It will not. It never is. You are in the fight of your very life. Again, not your life, his. This Pentecostal power will enable you to hear clearly and see more clearly. And the Lord will help you do in a very few weeks' time what it would take you years to do. But brother, sister, you got to stay in the press. You got to stay in the press. You know what I'm saying to you? You got to stay in the press. You got to keep your eye on the prize. It's him. It's him. Not what he had. Not what he's giving. It's him. He is the prize. Because hopefully one day you will be married to him and you will never ever leave his presence again. Because he will fill you with himself. You need to understand this. It is not the Christians in heaven that will be filled by him. They forfeit their opportunity. The moment they left this earth, 
not ready. They forfeit that opportunity to be ever forever filled with him. It is only the bride that will be filled with his life. He will be their life. Huh? <laughs> this is why you're fighting, brother and sister. This is why we're fighting. His spirit, the full grown spirit of the Lord, will step inside of you, his life, and it will never ever leave you ever again. And that you will walk in him knowing there will be nothing out of your reach. Because whatever you don't know, boom, he will quickly tell you. It is not the life that Adam could have had. It is much, much better. Much, much better. Though those that live in heaven, they must go to the tree of life and eat of the tree and keep getting that life. We have the tree of life inside of us. We eat of him. He is our life. We won't have to go to a tree and eat. This is what you are fighting for. We enter into the last phase of God's plan when we entered into this year. That's why things are so in such a mess in our world. And it will get darker. Jesus meant what he said in Isaiah 60. Gross darkness will cover the earth and the people. Gross darkness. All of the gray would have disappeared. You're either walking in the light or you're walking in darkness. No in between. The only light on this earth during that period will be the ones that have his life in them. That's it. The only light. And again, it has already been predetermined which one of us is to lay down our life physically for him if he desires it. Things just don't happen just because. There is a reason for everything. You can see that reason in the realm of the Spirit. All of the disciples were martyred, except John. That was predetermined before they came to the planet. You need to know what that life expects of you. And you cannot give it if it's not in you. That's why he must grow you up. He must grow you up. But to grow you up, brother, sister, he has to break you. He has to kill you. <laughs> He's bringing forth new wineskins, y'all. You cannot take the old wineskin and bring it. You only can fill the new wine skin with new wine. If you want to hold on to your old life, he cannot pour this new wine that will be poured out into your old life. It will bust the skin. You will die. The whole purpose this word of the Lord to you. You need revelation knowledge. You need to know what your king is doing. Especially concerning you. 
You just can't keep doing what you won't do. You just can't keep doing what you think he wants you to do. Just like in this word, the word is very specific. Very. Well, it is just as specific when it comes to you as an individual. You just don't know it. But you need to know. God is no respecter of person. If he tell me, he will tell you. I am no different than you. I've simply just made certain decisions. But I can testify to the fact more hell was thrown toward me. The more, the, the more I decided that I want his life, the more hell was thrown toward me. It will cost you. It will cost you. It will cost you friends. It will cost you loved ones. It will cost you money. It will cost you. Some of us, the cost will be more than others because the call is greater on some than others. Question is, are you willing? If you yield, even in the difficult, even in the hard, His grace is sufficient. He'd help you. The stubbornness that is deep inside of all of us, you have to surrender that. Huh? Come on. Isaiah said he's the potter. He's the potter that sits at the wheel. You are the vessels. He got all you sitting on his vessels. And he don't wait for you to get perfect. He used you, amen, according to your spiritual levels. And he take you off and he use you for this or that or whatever. And then you come to a certain level in your Christian wall where he cannot use you any further. He wants to promote you. So what does he do? He take you off the vessel, off the shelf as a vessel and he breaks you. <laughs> he throws you as a potter down and breaks you into pieces. And how is that interpreted? Something catastrophic something hurtful comes into your life in that breaking but you got to let the potter amen apply the water the water the washing of the water of the word amen to soften you and to soften you and he put you back in the pottery wheel again and he rolls you around and rolls you around and he begins to shape you again and again and again and see and what you don't yield to even in his shaping you come with another flaw but he don't just throw you away he sits you on his ship and he's continued to use you you know he, he, because you're on a journey and he usually even with the flaw but then there comes a time he takes you off again and he breaks you again and that goes on and on and on and on until one day in his shaping you there's no more flaws you look just like him. There's no need to break you anymore. That's the cup you agreed to, to drink of. When you told him, I want you in my life. See, y'all, it's more than about just going to heaven. It's sharing what he has. But brother, sister, this because we're in the last phase there are many who don't have the time left to continue to be broken and broken they don't have that's why they're only a minority that transitions it's only a small because they're not ready to be broken he knows they're not enough time so he simply leaves them on the shelf lose them just a little bit blesses him just a little bit because that's all he can do he can't fill them he can't fill them with 
magnificent glory. He can't pour new wine into him. They will buzz. He will destroy them. Because if he does, they'll get so haughty and lifted up high in pride. He will destroy them. So he just blesses them with a little bit. Because that's all they can handle. But next phase has come. Some of you have experienced brokenness. It's been putting you back together. The new wine has come in, y'all. The new wine has come in. The fire of his presence has come in. Now he can put you on display. He can trust you with that degree of glory. you will not take any credit for it. It's like he did not take any credit from his father. Amen? But the day will come when you stand before him perfected. You will think it not robbery to be equal to him because you have paid the price. You would have paid the price through suffering. Isn't it when you're hurting and you're crying and your eyes are puffed that you hear him the clearest? That's why it's called the fellowship of his suffering. <laughs> you get to know his voice more clear when you're suffering, when you're hurting. He designed it that way. Let me ask you a question. Is he worth it? Is he worth it? Come on, Sam. Hallelujah. I declare to you, I wasn't going to preach that. I gave you the chapter and verse. It had nothing what I do to what I said. Close your eyes for a moment. Father, we just present ourselves before you. I pray, Lord, help us not miss our day of visitation. Help us not miss it. There were many came right to the door. And they still missed it. There was something in them that they didn't let you rid them of that caused them not to experience the first Pentecost. 380 walked away. Hear our prayer tonight. Is that your prayer tonight? Talk to him. Talk to him. Hear our prayer tonight. We do not want to miss our day of visitation. Daddy, speak to their heart. Dreams, visions, whatever you need to do. Let the deep in them cry louder to the deep in you. Let them hate, hate, Lord, the things within them that pulls them from you. Let them hate it, Lord, more than anything. I pray. You said you would hear us when we cry to you. Hear our cry, Lord. Give us wisdom and understanding. expected of each one of us individually. We cannot measure up to each other. We are all different. The requirement for one is different than the other. I pray. Thank you, Daddy. Come just lift both hands. Thanks God for his word. We thank you, Father. Thank you for your faithfulness. Where sin abound, grace will much more abound. Grace will rise up. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you today.